Hey, I'm Audrey, I'm Odd Tattoos on Instagram. Today I'm here at Kingpin Tattoo Supply at uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. We're gonna be here doing a tattoo for you guys in full color today. Just trying to share some tips or maybe some advice on how to do color transitions or color packing in a full saturated color tattoo. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys uh, enjoy. So normally for uh, when you start to go to color in a piece, I think it's the mainly importance of the basic rule of your blacks in first. Uh, so right now I just kind of like go through and brush into the deepest corners of my tattoo of where I want like pitch black. And that means nothing else going behind that object. You know, you can't see around it. So that's why it's getting dark and that's why it's getting the darkest uh, contact point right there. After that, um, I usually work right into color concentrates. Um, so I usually go from black, color concentrate, and then into the actual color that I will be using for that item. So for instance, this character um, is actually from a Japanese manga, I believe. And it is not even on a TV show yet, so we're kind of just going basis off of like the drawings that have been made. Um, but it's a little character that is a dog that's also a chainsaw as well. And those accents on the character are normally black. And I don't mind using black, but I also like changing black into a different color if I can. So if Say an object was black and then the light was hitting it, maybe the object isn't truly black, it's actually like purple or blue, but it's so dark that it just looks like it's black. And that's kind of what I'm gonna be doing today for this character. Um, I'm just gonna be using black as like the deepest parts or the darkest parts of like the handles and the little chainsaw, um, I don't know, start lever or little pulley guy back here. Um, it's supposed to be his tail. Um, the, there it is, <laughs> coming in clutch. Um, to, they are black, but I'm actually gonna be saying that they're kind of purple, just to give them a little bit more of a vibrance to them and just so they don't just read all black. Um, I think black's cool, but I think it's also cooler if you can make a color look like something else as well, if that makes sense, um, like an illusion effect, because not every, color in this planet is actually exactly how you're seeing it. It usually has about three or four other colors in there that are kind of changing it or giving it a different hue. All right, so the majority of this character is orange. Um, and it's got some purple in it and blue. So I try to work with the darkest tones first before I go into my lighter tones. And that's just so we don't contaminate anything. Uh, I feel like that's pretty a, a, a rule for any tattooing or anyone's tattooing, no matter what the style is. Um, obviously I do a little bit more of a new school style. So I'm gonna be using a lot more colors uh, tediously <laughs> as everyone likes to joke around. Uh, to make all my color blends. But so for right now, we're gonna start off with uh, this concentrated purple that I'm using. I really love this color. Um, it's a very dark purple. Um, it literally looks like black in the light when you hold up the bottle. But once it gets into the skin, you can see that it is just like a very rich color. It's a very rich purple. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just kind of fading that right back into where that black is so that it looks like the black and the purple are literally just transitioning into each other. And once I start to get more towards the top of this object, that's when I'll start making the tone of it like lighter so it looks like it's actually hitting the light that it's in. Um, you wanna make like a nice little gradation of your colors just so that you're actually getting the objects um, full shape, you know, when an object hits light, it, it, it hits light in a certain way. So it's gonna be rounded or it's gonna look more cylindered. And I think that's very important to show in a tattoo because it's our jobs to make illusions on people's skin, essentially. You know, we're taking a 
a flat surface of your body and we're turning it into a, a piece of artwork. So for me, I want all those objects to look like what they would in real life, which would be round, square, sharp, soft, whatever they may be. And these ones for this little back part, um, they're just handlebars, so I'm not getting too crazy with them. Um, not to say anything bad, but they are just like a little bit of an accessory of the character, but I'm just making sure that I have the correct shading on it so then I can put highlights on it so it will give it like a nice shine to it at the end um, and it will actually look like a handle. So the purples that I'm using are uh, Eternals, the concentrated purple. Uh, Eternal makes a really great set of concentrates. They offer a blue, a turquoise, purple, and I believe green in that. And then for the lighter purple, um, what I'm using is, I believe it's just light purple uh, by Eternal. So we're going from black to concentrated purple to light purple. And then I usually leave like a little space up at the top of the object um, of where I'm, you know, coloring because that's your like light source. So I'm definitely gonna leave just a little bit of a gap right up in here, uh, just so I can go back with like a very, very light purple towards the end once we're doing like highlights. I think it's important to, you know, if you're gonna do like full saturated color like myself, you know, trying to have your colors picked out prior or, you know, just kind of having like, I say a plan of attack is always a good idea just because color theory is very complicated. Uh, it can be for some people. Uh, I've had challenges with it. I still think I do. I'm very new in this industry, so I definitely can admit that I struggle with a lot of things. Um, but that's why I also have friends. I reach out and try to travel so I can learn some stuff too. Um, but color theory is one of those things that I feel like color in tattoos, people don't really like to mess with. They find them time consuming, tedious. Um, and let's face it, everyone's pretty impatient nowadays of some sort. So I feel like if you're gonna do a color tattoo or do it at a level that you want, like to really have it at a high quality, um, like every tattoo you should do, but these, you know, just some homework on what colors uh, pair good together, you know, what's going to translate in certain skin tones because not everyone can have all the same color schemes, um, unfortunately. It's just like working with any colored piece of paper on the planet, you know, if you offer me a toned piece of paper, which is going to be a little bit more of a beige color, tan color, um, any color I put on top of that is going to also be a little bit of a, a beige hue to it, you know, just like a little bit of a darker hue, versus if you gave me a piece of plain computer paper straight from the printer, well that's pure white, doesn't have any pigment to it, there's no tanness, there's no toneness, so anything I put on that piece of paper is going to be its true value. And I do believe, you know, obviously in tattooing that works the same way, you know, I can't put on a bright green, blue uh, color on maybe that someone has a little bit more of a darker pigment and that's just because once that heals, that's not going to look the same as what if I would put it on someone who has maybe a very soft complexion and you know doesn't get a lot of sunlight or their you know ethnicity is just like Caucasian itself you know so you always have to make sure that you are doing a tattoo for that skin tone but also really thinking about how it's going to age on that client uh, because these are forever so you just want to make sure you're doing it pretty appropriately. I think another important little tip in doing any tattoo, but color tattoos is um, the best advice I was given by an artist. His name's Aaron Springs. He tattoos out in Texas. Um, he came through for a guest spot a long time ago when I was an apprentice at a shop, and uh, he was wiping the top of my arm. And I was just like, oh, that's interesting. It doesn't really burn that much. You know, I'm so used to it burning with the soap and stuff. And uh, I looked at my arm and I was like, so are you not using soap? <laughs> and he laughed and he was like, yeah, well, I am, but I'm not right now. He goes, why would I use soap on a whole tattoo that's gonna take me 
hours, you know, five, six hours to do. And I'm just gonna keep irritating the skin by putting soap in it the whole time. He goes, but versus you can, and what I do now is I just take a little bit of um, Vaseline or whatever ointment you're using to tattoo with. And I just go ahead and put a little bit more extra down on the skin. And then you just take plain distilled water and you wipe away and you can still see exactly what you're doing. Uh, the ink's gone, but now that client doesn't have, you know, just burning bactine or soap or whatever you've just sprayed on them into their skin. Um, and you're controlling that irritation more. It's not as um, upsetting and you're able to work on the skin for longer periods of time. Happy skin is a good thing to have during a tattoo appointment, especially if you're gonna be working on them for hours, you know. might be an unpopular opinion, but uh, you know, I think it's very important that when you're doing a character tattoo for someone as well, that you, you make that character for that person um, versus just giving them a character, if that makes sense. So, um, you know, consultations with your clients or just small conversations with them can tell you a lot about a person, um, especially if you're attentive enough. Um, my client today, um, is actually a buddy of mine, but also, you know, just talking to them about this concept. I don't really much, I don't really watch much anime, but, um, you know, he showed me some photos and with my imagination and me knowing my client, just talking about his own personal interests like sneakers or music or fashion at all that, you know, instead of just giving him a printed out version of the cartoon that he requested from me, I sat down and I thought about things that would make this a little bit more to him. Uh, what's gonna make this design set off differently than any others? And we wanted to put some little Nike shoes on him, so we got that done. We put the little gold chain on him. Um, we added the little blood splats, but pretty much at the end of the day, it's what can I do for my client to make you feel like that nobody else is gonna get this tattoo? The, not that the d design is so crazy that nobody else will want it, but just more of the lines of like, that's not something that you're gonna just get printed off of Google, you know? Um, that's not just a, a symbol that everyone has walking around. That's literally something that was made for him, to him, and it is him, you know, in some shape, way, or form. It's like a little reflection of him as this character. Um, that might not be for everyone's design process, but I do feel like if, you know, you say you make custom art for people and that you do character design, that you should make the, de the drawing absolutely custom and not just like nab it from the, uh, the source, you know, the movie, the anime, the book itself. Like, make it different, make it for that client, make them feel special. I mean, we all know that tattoos are not cheap, so it's kind of a slap in the face to someone, I think, personally, when you say, hey, I require X amount of financial money to get this permanent piece of artwork from me, but it's not gonna be custom to you. And I think that's crazy. Um, yeah, that would break my heart if anybody didn't feel like they could get like a one-of-a-kind piece. That's what anybody should get. Everybody should get that. I think one of the hardest colors to work with in tattooing, or at least for me, has been purple. Um, it's a little bit of a hard color to read, in my opinion, just because it's a mix of blue and red, obviously. Um, and then red or blue is uh, the color of your blood right before it hits the surface, and then once oxygen hits it, it turns red. So it's just kind of a battle sometimes to be wiping away at something, and it looks more red or you know, you're not sure if it's more purple or not, and you're not sure if it's the skin that's irritated or the actual um, ink that's coming through or not. Um, but I definitely have noticed that uh, myself and other artists I've talked to say that uh, purples and browns have been our, uh, our Achilles tendons, if they will. I think I've kind of forced myself to work with certain colors so much to m be able to say, like, I don't care if they're hard or not. So like, once I noticed myself having a struggle with purple, sometimes I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna design a lot of things that have purple in it. 
<laughs> make myself work with it because you can't avoid it and purple is one of those colors that people just eat up so if you think you're gonna run away from a color and purposely not work with it just because you're not good with it you probably should rethink that and wanted to re-explore that color more and actually give it a real shot because now I don't really uh, tense up or get really worried about using uh, yellow like or uh, excuse me uh, purple like I used to So now I'm going to start working more on the mouth of the character, which is going to be like the pink tones. Um, the colors I have chosen for that is actually going to be a watermelon from Solid. Um, it's one of my favorite colors actually to work with. Um, it's just this really pretty, uh, like it says, watermelon color. Um, it just has a very nice pinkness to it, I feel. Turn more. Thank you. Um, I think it, it has like a, a realisticness to it, but also is like, nope, it's pretty pinky as well. Um, it's also a color that I use for multiple things like tongues, the inside of the mouth of a character. Um, actual watermelon I've not tattooed yet but that would be fun to use it with so I'm down for that if anybody's interested let me know uh, I did use it for a lollipop though um, that was really cute it was like a heart shape and stuff but it's just a really fun color and then what I'll do is I'll even dip that watermelon color into um, purple and or red or dark red and I'll make it transition into like the black I'm using so Sometimes I'll just dip like a little bit of that watermelon color and what I did is I dipped it into a deep red by Eternal right now and I'm just pushing it back up into that black uh, for the outer part of this tongue right here just to help it fade more into this watermelon effect. Trying to shade the side of the tongue but also want to get a nice little shading on the top of it too just so it shows its dimension and now I'm gonna go back into the top of this tongue part with that same watermelon color because that's like the dominant color of the whole tongue and I'm just gonna rotate all the way down towards the bottom of it because what I'm trying to do here is taking the darkest color or the prominent color of the tongue and giving it almost like a, a little highlight towards the bottom. So right now I'm just creating that little edge that's gonna go down the side of the tongue and then curve more towards back to the top just because you're trying to create that dimension that the object is round. And after I've worked the color out of the tube, you can see that I've left myself a nice little like line right there. Um, that's actually what I'm going for, it's intentional. Like I said, I wanna leave that for a highlight effect. Um, and now I'm just gonna work out the rest of this watermelon color, just kinda fan it out. Um, I do think it is important to keep the skin happy throughout the process, even though you are doing literally damage to it, you're traumatizing it, you're stabbing it, um, any way you can make it happy, I think you should do it. AKA, the tattooers out there, it's cruel and unusual punishment not to use Bactine on people. It's rude. <laughs> I'm calling you out for it. <laughs> I think, not saying that anybody should have to use it all the time, but you know, these things are not fun to get sometimes, and if your client's struggling, it's literally a, very minimal pricing product compared to everything else that we use in tattooing and it's not bougie and it's not extra um, but it is a way for your client to have a more enjoyable sit uh, while they're getting tattooed and that way you can work on them longer but also their skin is remaining not as beaten up or as irritated uh, once you start introducing a little bit of a lidocaine or any type of helper in there. Um, Usually I use Bactine on everyone. Um, that's just my go-to. I think it's safe. It's over the, you know, over the counter. So that means you know you can get it at the pharmacy and stuff like that. CVS, Walmart, Target even sells it. Um, 
it's not anything special just for tattooing. They've actually used that for like kids and other things as well to place like IVs and stuff. Um, Cause it has 4% of lidocaine. So even though it's not much, that's really, uh, as long as you have some open skin in there, that's enough to uh, numb out some of this during the process for sure. Um, another product that I just recently used is the uh, Holy Water. Um, we just actually used that on my, my client for today. Um, and once we started, after we got our lines done and we put the holy water on them and had them sit for about 25 minutes or so, um, once we started getting back into it, he definitely said that the spice level of the tattoo kind of calmed down. Definitely not gone completely, but it's not as intense as it was before. So, And as you can see on his skin, I've been tattooing him and we've been working for a few hours now. I'd probably say almost close to like the three hour mark. Um, that his skin is actually not mad. Um, I mean, yes, he is bleeding, that's normal. You're gonna get that during a tattoo. But other than that, there's no excessive irritation um, or bleeding that's going on. So that kind of is a good sign for me telling me I'm doing the job right as of right now. <laughs> uh, you know, not going too much, not overworking, um, but also his skin just literally staying as clear as it is right now is a good sign as well. So I'm still working with that watermelon color from solid. Um, the only thing I'm doing is that I'm actually just hitting it with white so it just keeps getting lighter as I'm going towards the top of the tongue. Um, like I said, trying to make an illusion happen here on a flat surface uh, with someone's skin and then it's our job to make it look like something's sitting on it. So we just wanna make sure that, you know, taking dark to light, just like any light source going all the way up to the top and making sure that this tongue looks round and adorable and pink like it's supposed to but once we get up towards the top up here of the tongue and I'm doing this light pink all the way up here I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap again on this out part so right up in here and here I'm gonna leave a little bit blank and that's just gonna be towards the end of the tattoo um, once I've gotten all the colors down and I'm ready to do my highlights I'll go back through that with pure white um, and I'll just hit it so that it shows that that's the brightest point of where the light is hitting that, that source of the object. So uh, for this bottom part, I'm going through with the red because this character, since he's a little chainsaw dog, obviously you gotta make him a little bad. Um, so he's going to be having some blood on his actual um, chainsaw coming out of the top of his head. But then I have him also sitting in this little puddle of blood. Um, so what I'm doing with the puddle of blood, just to make it a little bit more, like I said, dimensional um, in the beginning is I took a deep red from Eternal and I kind of put that towards more of the back of the design where the puddle would be. Um, and then I brought it up to the front and I did exactly what I did with the puddle, what I did with the tongue is that I made like a little bit of an edge with the darker color and that's just to um, make it look like it's you know, kind of rounding towards that shape or towards the bottom of that. Um, and then I took uh, literally light red from Eternal and I have that working into it and going towards the top just so it looks like that is the lightest part of where the puddle of blood is um, and that like the light source is hitting that. And I'm literally gonna do the same thing on this side. It's just, I'm gonna take the deep red that was doing the border and I'm just gonna fan it underneath the shoe because obviously that's gonna be a really dark part of the puddle where he's standing. We'll wipe away just so we can see what we're doing still. Any spots there. And the same thing towards the front. I'm just gonna have my client move his arm just a little bit, perfect. I think um, also making sure your client is in the correct position for coloring is a, a really important thing. Um, a lot of artists, you know, you want to make sure your, your client is comfortable, but also you need to make sure that you're working in your favor. So if you are trying to color pack someone at a certain angle and, you know, it's kind of looking choppy or not exactly the way you want it's probably because you don't have the client actually positioned the correct way for how you're trying to color pack um, or reach the certain spot of where you're trying to color pack. 
Um, I was actually talking to a fellow tattooer at a convention this weekend about, you know, holding our machines a certain way just because sometimes, you know, you've been, I've been drawing for years, so I've drawn and I've held a, pen, a pencil in my hand for so long and I've hold it a certain way that in tattooing, you don't exactly hold the machine the same way that you would hold that pencil. So I find myself sometimes in the middle of a tattoo, I have rotated the machine around in my hand uh, by accident, but that's just because I'm so used to picking up a number two pencil and every time you pick it up and put it down, uh, you're usually just grabbing the pencil and it doesn't matter what direction that pencil's always been because it's the same shape all the way around and any way you draw with that pencil, it's gonna go in that direction um, versus a tattoo machine. You can't really just pick it up and angle it any certain way you want. Um, science kind of plays into that, unfortunately. Uh, if you have the machine at a wrong angle, um, like I said, a wrong positioning of that client, gravity is actually working against you and it's not allowing ink to flow out appropriately from uh, the needle itself. So sometimes you're getting an inconsistent color packing and that's just because your your ink is actually not angled appropriately with your needle um, to your machine of how you're trying to put it into the skin so it's literally just not gravity gravity allowing that ink to flow out it's just kind of getting stuck until you angle it uh, usually some tattooers will like dip the machine in water to see if that will help it out or you know or the tip of the needle in water just to see if that will help it but as, as soon as you go to re-angle the machine that ink will start flowing out immediately Trying to make sure that the client and the area of where you're color packing always stays kind of flat. You know, you don't want it, them like up in the air or anything like that. You're just gonna not gonna have a consistency of it. Nobody, I mean, unless you're working with a needle, an easel, nobody's usually uh, drawing right up and down anymore. You know, making sure you have a good stretch on the skin is always a good thing too. Um, skin bunches up you can't really work through it as in like literally the needles cannot cut through the skin um, essentially that's kind of what we're doing anyway are glorified scratches on the skin and then they're depositing ink at the same time um, so if you really want to make sure that your color is going in there really nice and saturated um, make sure that your skin or the skin that you're working on is nice and uh, taut when you're stretching it so that way you're uh, getting all of that color definitely in there for sure. And it's not building up or it's not being um, inconsistent. And now that I have like all of this puddle of blood, <laughs> get it, ha <laughs> uh, on here, that little skin break right there at the bottom, um, that's what we call that, like leaving a little gap skin breaks and tattoos. We can go back through with a red that I have for like the majority of the blood and that's when I'm going to go underneath of that dark red that I kind of made like a wall of earlier and show the dimension of the blood like that it's actually like puddled. And then with any highlighted area that you do, I just try to leave a gap because you want to make sure you got room for whites, like pure whites. That's another thing I try to do for my clients is try to knock out some of the, you know, you could do it both ways, I mean, two ways, honestly, and there's only two ways to do it. Either you do the, the, sh the really ouchy parts first or you get them done last. And for me, I would rather get some of those done first just because I feel like some of those ouchy parts are those uh, <laughs> final blows for some clients. So it's like, if I wait to do this last, or if I do this first, you might tap out. But if I wait to do it last, you also might give out before I do white highlights. So it's kind of a touch and go thing that you have to play with your clients. I think getting the more sensitive areas more towards like the bottom of the wrist, top of the arm, you know, bending wise, those areas are going to be more sensitive, the thinner skin and less contact. Any part of the body that has less contact with anything is going to get hurt when it gets tattooed. That's for damn sure. Um, so I want to just, I personally think like it's easier to get these done um, because then you don't have to wait till the final end where you know, you've been working on your client for four hours or so and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, well now that I've just tormented you for four hours, I'm gonna go to the very sensitive parts of the tattoo and really get it done. <laughs> and I feel like that's not the good move, so.
There's also not a wrong and right way, I want to say, to do certain things. Um, you know, I haven't been tattooing that long and I was pretty honored when I, you guys reached out to ask me to come hang out and talk about colors and coloring and, um, you know, do a, a real fun tattoo for my homie here. But, you know, I don't know everything in tattooing. Um, nobody does, really. Um, I feel like there are certain things that we do do that are like appropriate that should be protocol as in like you know paperwork and health code things and you know making sure certain colors are laid down prior to others but at the end of the day um these are handmade pieces of artwork just like any other medium of art is and usually when you have a real artist sitting in their home doing art they don't do art and they don't make their art the same way everyone else does you know um there are rules to it you know make sure you don't mix your clean and dirty water brushes together and this that and the other but at the end of the day you know we're all doing this differently and it is all subjective for the most part um even when it comes down to asking you know what machines or equipment or um what size needle do you use you know all of that is just small details and I have no problem sharing that with people but there is no right and wrong you know to that there's not one certain size that should only be appropriate or should only do one thing uh, for needles or in tattooing you know I use different needles for different things all the time um, sometimes I will even use a, a round shader to outline something if I really want like a thick nice bold line around something um, and that's something that everyone tells you no you can't do that because it causes the line to be fuzzy over the course of time and this that and the other and it's like well yes that could be true but also how fast were you moving the machine how fast was you know how slow is the needle um, are you coloring it in so technically if the line has a fuzziness to it and you have a whole bunch of co uh, coloring around it does it really affect that like certain things you know are taken into account so I always tell people that I have no problems answering questions or you know being as informative as I can with what I personally have experienced and know about tattooing but I definitely don't know everything and definitely take some of my advice or my uh, information with a grain of salt because I am not the guru but I have had some tattoos come back healed pretty nice so I want to say I know something about it but you know so at the top here I'm still doing the blood effect um, that I was doing down at the bottom like I made these look like they're pooled so once I actually am able to wipe away in a minute you'll be able to see that effect a little bit more um, but I essentially took that that deep red from Eternal that I was using and I came up to the top and just did a, a very small um, shadow effect on each little droplet of blood that I have coming up at the top here um, and like I said all of this is for dimension we all just use little different gradients and techniques to make things look more uh, like an illusion on that client's skin so pretty much I'm just coming up up here to make these little droplets look a little bit more appearing and like I said most of every object I color in I'm gonna leave some kind of gap in there just so I can have a space for a pure highlight of some sort once that time comes and you know white is the uh, the cleanest color of them all when it comes to uh, being easily contaminated by other colors and sorts so you definitely want to use white for last that's that's definitely not a rule I would probably play around with in tattooing is using it first and then thinking that it's gonna stay white because it's probably not we'll do little blood marks on his chainsaw Uh, I usually use a 13 mag curve when I color in things. Um, most of my projects are around a, sh a good old, I say, sh medium size <laughs> um, tattoo. So 13 mag curve is just what is my custom size that I've used for color packing. Um, I also use round shaders in my color packing for small tight areas that I can't reach with the mag. Um, perfect example of that I'll be doing is later when I go to do all my highlights they're usually done with a, uh, a round shader 
um, unless the object has some kind of like white on it and I need a mag to like color that in more. But usually I use just small little round shaders to fill in tight spots or do all my highlights effects. It's small and I don't have to worry about going outside of the lines with it or anything like that. So the majority of this character is definitely orange, um, but I always mix colors. So I'm never gonna do just like plain orange into black. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of a darker color and first go from black to a darker tone into a lighter tone. So what I'm using for this character in particular, is since he's all orange, to make his little darker shadows a little bit darker uh, into the black, I'm actually gonna keep using that deep red from uh, Eternal, and I'm going to work that into the orange. I think I enjoy the gradients I can get out of uh, orange. You know, you go from red to orange to yellow pretty well, and uh, I think that's like a color palette. Or um, I've done pretty there's some you know tattoos that involve fire. You know, which obviously orange, red, yellow. Um, I've also used orange and using it in like a gold effect. So you're going from like a little bit of a yellow to like a little bit of an orange to a brown to a darker brown. Uh, you could play it that way too, um, just depending on what kind of gold effect you're going for. But I definitely enjoy using orange. I think it's a good color. So I'm excited to use it today. But yeah, for the chain part, um, for the inner part, just so it actually looks like you know, you're looking inside of a chain, I'm gonna be using brown, uh, dark brown from Eternal. I really like Eternal's colors. I've never really had an issue with them um, as far as you know, reactions or anything like that. I haven't had any issues. Uh, the actual tones of the colors, I would like to say are very true to what I believe is in the bottle and how it comes out to the skin. Uh, so I've always been a fan of them too, uh, but I'm also not picky. Uh, most of my palette has been Eternal. The only solid colors that I've been using are, uh, I believe is that watermelon that I use for the tongue. Um, and that's it. I'm gonna need you to rotate this out more. There you go, dude. I think probably one of my favorite colors to work with in tattooing is gonna be turquoise. Um, Turquoise Concentrate from Eternal is probably the best color on this planet, besides the black that I, we need to outline. Uh, but in color world, I absolutely love that, that Turquoise Concentrate. You can do so many things with it. Wow, that brown does not want to come off. Um, you can dip it into, obviously, like mint, so you can get like a nice more blue out of it. You can obviously dip your blues in it to make some kind of cool, um, you know, bluish effect, but my favorite thing to do with it actually is I will take that turquoise concentrate and I'll du like dip it into like a lime green or something and just like really make it like this pungy color. And that's like a really fun one to hang out with. If you're doing any kind of like weird blues or, you know, I say weird things because like a lot of people are doing like mythical creatures and like fun things nowadays, I feel like. So you can really switch it up and do whatever. For part of the chain, I'm also using ochre, um, just besides yellow, and that's just to give, like I said, more dimension to the piece. You know, you always want to add, you know, in my opinion, you want to add as many colors as you can to the piece just to make it more believable, you know. Uh, this is not a real creature in real life, so I'm going off of the basis of what my imagination is. Um, so you just always want to bring that character. Um, someone once told me, like, make them a life. You know, um, I'm friends with a lot of tattooers, thank gosh, in this industry, so they've taught me a lot, but one in particular specializes in character design and stuff like that. And he, uh, one time I was, I, I drew a character and he sent me a message back and he's like, well, what's his name? And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, what's the character's name? And I was like, I don't know what you mean. The guy just asked me for like this. And he's like, yeah, but it's it's your job to make something that's not real, real. So like 
you have to give him a life, you have to give him a name, you have to give him like an expression and everything like that. So it's kind of a little bit of a rule I've had uh, kept in my head uh, during my tattoo career is like telling a story and making it believable because you're literally essentially trying to do that. You're trying to make the client, but also anybody that sees that tattoo, believe that this is a real idea um, and it's, it's a true thing. Even though it might not be like a realistic painting or something, it doesn't have to be. All right. So now I'm just gonna go be going through with blue. Um, I'd like to do this in a little bit of the background, you know? Um, I don't like my objects just like standing in one little floating space, I guess you could say. Um, right now I'm using a little bit of blue. I'm just touching a little bit of the center of the eye that I have exposed, just so it doesn't look like it's just pure white. I just want some blue tucked into there. But now I'm gonna take the blue and literally just kind of push it all through the background of the piece, um, just giving it like a little bit of a background, if you will. I'm gonna bring this out just a little bit. There we go. So it stretches your skin a little bit more. And when I'm doing my background like this, like when I'm just doing like a color thing, I try to do, it's like fanning the color out. So, you know, you start towards the object and just really color pack it, tight circles. And then once you start to get away from the object, just starting to kind of like loosen up your uh, swing, you know, and your rotation. And also like, you'll see the ink coming out of your cartridge. It's like, oh, okay, I'm literally running out of ink. Um, so that's kind of how I, I approach this. It's just very light, like brushing through, um, and then obviously closer to the object, a little bit more color packing happens there. But it just creates, you know, whatever color you use. I'm, my go-to lately has been this blue. I should probably stop lately. It's an unhealthy addiction, but whatever. Um, mint blue is just a, a really rad color in my opinion, but also with all the warm tones that I have in this tattoo, with the orange and the red, uh, something cold like blue is a prime uh, color to use to like introduce some coolness to it. Um, hot and cold is like a temperature thing in tattooing and even though most people don't think they understand color theory, um, the average person, believe it or not, will look at a tattoo and be like, you know, I like it, but I just, there's something about it that I don't like and it's usually the color concept that someone's chosen or it's usually a design flaw, meaning it's not atomically correct. Um, and I think everyone has an eye for that. I don't think you need to be a tattooer per se to be able to look at something and be like, mm, that's weird. Um, but looking at something and going, oh, that's aesthetically pleasing. Usually everyone has that gift. Um, so yeah, I just try to pick tones or complementary tones that will be pleasing to the eye. Also, you wanna pick what's gonna pop out on your client's skin too. That's a, a good plus. Thanks for watching with us today, guys. I hope that some of the color theories or little info that I shared with you helped you guys out. Uh, thanks for Kingpin for having me here today. It was a super rad time. If you guys wanna follow me on Instagram, my Instagram's Odd Tattoos. Uh, I love traveling to tattoos, so any shops out there, if you guys are willing to host, let me know. See ya.